Today we are in section 4.5, graphing linear equations in standard form. So standard form is what's new. All right, and standard form is this. AX plus BY equals C. A and B can't be zero, okay, in order for this scenario to work, okay, for standard form. So we've learned we can graph linear equations using tables. What's our standard set of X values in a table? Negative 2. 0 and 2, okay? So we've graphed them using tables. We've graphed them using slope. Today we're going to use x and y intercepts, okay? So now we're just looking at a little different. Basically now we're looking at an all or nothing scenario. If y equals 0, what's my x value and vice versa, okay? So using my x, y intercepts where the line crosses each axis. All right, and the bottom line is I'm using all of these methods to graph linear equations. The same ones. So there are so many different ways we can look at one equation to graph it. Okay, so in example one, we're graphing a linear equation that is currently written in standard form. Because remember, standard form, you just wrote it down, AX plus BY equals C. Basically what that means is, here's my X term, here's my Y term, and now here's my number by itself. That's all it means, okay? So in order to graph a linear equation that is originally written in standard form, I have to put it in slope-intercept form. All right, so let's, let's do a refresher real quick. What is my formula for slope-intercept? Y equals M x plus b. You guys remember that? Okay, so we're kind of far from that format. Would you agree? We're kind of far from y being by itself. So this is something that you actually have already done, and this is why this type of question has been a review question on all of your tests up until this point. Getting y by itself, well now it's a little more complicated than it was in the last section. Now, instead of just having to move one number, I have to move multiple terms to get y by itself. The first one is the term that is not connected to y, because y is what I'm solving for. So how could I get negative 2x to cancel to the other side? How could I get it to completely cancel out, Caleb? I need to add it add 2x to both sides, okay? I don't divide, guys. If I divide, then I'm not actually canceling it, and I have to divide everything by that term, and that would just, that would not get me to where I'm trying to go, okay? So I need to add 2x to both sides. Again, my whole goal is get y by itself. Okay, so now I have 3y equals, which term do I write first? According to slope-intercept, which term do I write first, Sam? And is it positive or negative? Okay, so the sign is really important. Is 6 positive or negative? It is negative. Very good. Okay, but is it in slope-intercept form now? No. So this is kind of what we dealt with in the last section. But now we just have some extra steps to get it in slope-intercept. So now what do I do across the entire equation? What do I do? Tell me. Divide by 3. Divide by three. Divide by 3, 3, and 3, okay? And y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. And this, again, is something that you did on the last, te last test and most of you did very well on, to graph a linear equation that's written in slope-intercept form. Go ahead and do that on your graph. Go ahead and graph this equation now. Okay, very good. So your first point needs to go at negative 2 on the y-axis because, and hopefully this is a refresher, but that number at the end of the equation, that tells me where the line crosses the y-axis. But where do I go from there? How do I know where my next point is going to go? Jakari, how do I know where my next point's going to go? All right, first point went at negative 2. Where does my second point go? I need to go where from negative 2? Up or down? Up how many? 
two, and then over three, and I use my rise over my run to tell that, okay? So I go up two, over three, plot my point, and I draw my line, okay? All right, and I graph the linear equation that was originally written in standard form. Okay, so now we're going to do one more, and we're going to do it on the same graph. Okay. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and do this one. Again, it's written in standard form, ax plus by equals c. Okay, but we have to get it in slope-intercept form, so we have to get y by itself. All right, so let's go ahead and do our steps to get it by itself. Okay, um, what do I do first? I saw a lot of you had it on your paper. What do I do first? I need to add two-thirds to both sides. Very good. Okay, so add two-thirds x. Don't forget the x. Okay, take the x with you uh, to both sides. And, I mean, in this case, it's a little different because it's a zero, but two-thirds x still goes first. Okay, that zero just kind of holds the place. All right, and now where does my first point go? On the zero for the y. And then where does my next point go? Up, two, over three. And I draw my line. Okay? All right, any questions about getting an equation from standard form to slope-intercept? Any questions? Okay. Um, now, in example two, now I'm going to use intercepts. Okay, well, we've actually already been dealing with y-intercepts, right? That's what we did, was we put an equation in slope-intercept form, we use the y-intercept, and then we follow the slope. Okay, so now, here's what we're doing, and you're going to see an example four of how this kind of comes together in real life and where this would be important. Okay, so, um, actually, let me kind of try to put this in perspective for you to start with. Have you ever had more than one option of spending your money, like when you walk in a store. Anybody ever been to like Walmart, Target, whatnot? Okay, so is it an option to buy everything in the store? No, you have to pick something, right? So every item has a price, but sometimes you don't really consider the price of an item because you're not going to pay for it, right? So let's say you walk into, uh, I don't know, Old Navy. And you have 20 bucks to spend, and pants are a certain price, and shirts are a certain price, um, but you only want to buy pants. Do you care how much the shirts cost? No. So an X and a Y intercept basically is this, okay? If you have a certain total or a certain amount, how much of your X could you have or how much of your Y could you have? Now, that might not totally make sense, but I do want you to have this in your, in your mind as we're graphing these. It's an all or nothing scenario in that you're not even considering that Y has a value when you're trying to find the X intercept. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Um, go ahead and draw your X plus 3Y equals negative 3. All right, if you don't have your graph set up yet, that's okay. Just pay attention to the equation. All right, x plus 3y equals negative 3. Well, now you need to write the same exact equation a second time, okay? So your book is not going to have it written two times, but you need to know that you need to write it two times, and here's why. Because on one of them, you're going to find the x-intercept, and on the other one, you're going to find the y-intercept. That's why you need two equations. You use one equation to find x, and you use a second of the same equation to find your y-intercept. Okay? And here's what my rule says. If I want to find my x-intercept, I plug in 0 for y. Again, if I want to buy all the shirts, I don't care how much the pants cost. Okay? Or vice versa. So if I want to solve for x, I need to plug in 0 for y. All right, and that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so x plus 3y equals negative 3. x plus 3 times 0. I plug in 0 for y to get it to cancel equals negative 3. Well, what's 3 times 0? Zero. 0. So x equals what? Zero. Hold on. x equals negative 3. 
okay? So if y equals 0 and the y cancels out, my x value is negative 3, okay? So if I want to solve for x and I plug in 0 for y, what do you think is going to happen on my second equation when I want to solve for y? What do I do? What do I plug in for x? 0. So now 0 plus 3y equals negative 3. Well, am I done? Divide both sides by 3. Okay, and y equals negative 1. All right, one of the biggest mistakes that I see, guys, I see people trying to pair these up like an ordered pair. Oh, this is negative 3, negative 1, and they plot the point and they think they're done. That's not what it's saying here. It's saying that the line crosses the x-axis at negative 3, so I need to make this an ordered pair, okay? Well, negative 3, since that's x, that comes first in the ordered pair. Do you agree? That x term comes first. What did you plug in for y to get that answer? What did you plug in for y on the first one? 0. So it's negative 3, 0. There's your first ordered pair. Okay, hold on. All right, now let's make our second ordered pair. y equals negative 1. Well, what was my x value in that equation? 0. zero. So now it's 0, negative 1. All right, so I'm making an ordered pair out of each equation. All right, how did I come up with, all right, so if, in case I confuse some of you, how did I come up with that y equals 0? Because that's what I used. That's what I plugged in for y. And the number I got that was x equals, that's my x value. Okay? So remember, I'm doing all this to figure out where my line crosses each axis. So now plot the points on your graph. Okay, my first point goes at negative 3, 0. I just follow the ordered pairs now. Where does my second point go? Where's it go, guys? 0, negative 1. All right, how many of you, your graph looks like this? Okay, so what do you notice, guys, about this graph? You can see exactly your points are on. One point is on the x-axis. The other point is on the y-axis. So you've, you've graphed the intercepts. You know where the line crosses each axis. All right, so the next example is the exact same thing. All right, again, your book is not going to write it twice like this. Your book's only going to write it once. But you know you need to write it twice. Why? Why do you need to write it twice? One of them is x. The other one is y that you have to solve for. Technically, it doesn't matter which one you solve first, but I just like to do x first because x comes first in the ordered pair. All right, so I want you to try to do this one. We just did one together. Okay, so I want to see how far you can get on this to find each intercept and then graph it on the same graph that you just did the last one. All right, so we're going to put a second line on that graph. Okay, how did I solve for x? What did I plug in for y? Nolan, what did you plug in for y to solve for x? Looks like you're writing diligently back there. Um, to solve this one, you said 2x minus what? What did you have to plug in for y? Help them out, guys. Zero. If you're solving for x, you plug in zero for y. Did you do that, Ashley? Okay. So minus zero equals eight. Guys, this completely cancels out. So 2x equals eight. This is about the easiest equation you can solve. What do you do to both sides? Divide by two. Divide by two. So x equals four. How do I put that into an ordered pair? How do I put that into an ordered pair? Uh, Bailey, how, did, how do I put that into an ordered pair? If x equals 4, what would be my ordered pair? Very good, 4, 0. 4, 0. Okay, so now for the next one, if I want to solve for y, what am I going to plug in for x? 0. So 2 times 0 minus y equals 8. Well, 2 times 0 is what? 0. It cancels. So now negative y equals 8. But is that my answer? Negative y equals 8? No. What's the problem? The problem is y is negative. 
and there's an understood one in front of it. So what would I need to do actually to solve for y? I can't have a negative. Divide both sides by negative one. Okay, so anytime, and guys, I put this in here for a reason, okay? Because when we see those negative variables, we can't just ignore that. We have to understand, I have to actually do something with that. So putting that understood one in front of it is really important. So now y equals negative eight. Y equals negative eight, okay? All right, so you might have accidentally got that right, but that's why the answer is negative. All right, someone give me the ordered pair. Aaliyah, what would be my ordered pair that goes uh, for my y-intercept? You're close, but because y is negative 8, it would come second. So it would say 0, negative 8. So she made a really common mistake that I see a lot. Okay, she said negative 8, 0, because she automatically wrote the number first. But what did she forget? That this is my y value so it has to go where y goes in the ordered pair. See that, Ashlyn? Faith, you see that? y negative 8 goes second. Okay, now am I ready to graph it? Okay, so now I can plot my points right on each axis at 4, 0, and 0, negative 8. Is that where you guys put your points? Okay. All right, can I tell you something? You could figure out your rise and your run, couldn't you? You could figure out your slope, couldn't you? And from that, you could actually write this equation in slope-intercept form without even ever really messing with the equation. But we're not going to do that, okay? But do you see how it comes together? All right, example three, I, I don't know why this is um, kind of where it is in the lesson, um, but we need to review writing an equation just straight up writing an equation in slope-intercept form. So now we're not dealing with the graphing part at all. All I want you to do, do basically, guys, is solve for y, which you know how to do. So don't be thrown off by the fact, oh, this is example three. It's supposed to be harder. You're literally just writing the equation in slope-intercept form. It's just more practice. And on your quiz on Wednesday, I'm going to put a couple of these on there where all you're doing is writing it in slope-intercept. Actually, it's on your um, quiz and test next week, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, and just writing in slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and practice that. So I'm not even going to do the first one with you because this is something that I think most of you have an idea of how to get started on, and then I'll walk around, check, and then we'll go over it. Okay, what do I do first on the first equation? Amani, what do I do first? Yeah, she's exactly right. I need to subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, now I have 3y equals, which term do I write first? Which term do I write first? According to slope-intercept, which term comes first? Negative 4x. Negative 4x, so we have to pay attention to the sign. Negative 4x plus 24. Now what do I have to do to everything across the whole equation? Divide everything by 3. Okay, and y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 8. So if I were graphing this, where would my first point go if I were graphing it? Where does my first point go? On a positive 8, and where do I go from there? Down, Down 4 over, over three. 3, and I plot my point and uh, draw my line. All right, so now do this one. Um, you need your y, sorry. This is a 3y. All right, x plus 3y equals 6. Go ahead and solve this one. x plus 3y equals 6. All right, guys, so to solve for y, what do I do first? Minus x. Minus x from both sides. 3y equals what comes first? Negative x. Negative x plus 6. And now what do I do across the whole equation? Divide by 3. Wait a second, how do I do negative x divided by 3? Yes, put a 1 in front of it. Negative 1 third x. Oops, that should not have been a negative. Sorry, I messed up. Alright, plus 2. Okay, and I'm done with that one. So just basically taking equations that were written in standard form and putting in slope-intercept 
it's just an extra step. But it's actually an extra step that I kind of already knew how to do. I just didn't know that I was calling it standard form. All right, um, example four. All right, so we're going back to that all or nothing scenario. All right, let's read the equation together. It's up here on the screen. All right, you have $6 to spend on apples and bananas. The equation, so this is something that your book will give you. One and a half X, are you paying attention? One and a half X plus 0 0.6 Y equals six. All right, so we have to understand what this equation means. One and a half X plus 0 0.6 Y equals six. Well, six stands for what? Six dollars. Money. So 1.5 stands for how much money? How much money? A dollar fifty. Zero point six stands for how much money? Sixty cents. So here's what it's saying: You're going to pay a dollar fifty for a pound of apples and sixty cents for a pound of bananas. So how much could you buy if you're either going to buy all apples and no bananas, or all bananas and no apples? So again, are, has anybody been to the farmers market? Has anybody been to the farmers market downtown? Anybody? Okay, so farmer's market is usually cash only, right? Some of them can take like debit cards, but most of the time you, you bring cash, so you bring six bucks, and you're like, okay, I'm not really feeling bananas today. So does it matter how much the bananas cost? If you have no intention of buying any? No. So you go up to the stand and you're like, really, I just want to buy all apples today. All right, so what are you going to do? You're going to plug in what for the bananas? Zero, right? Because you're not buying any, okay? So what we're doing here is we're looking at if I don't want to buy any of the other one, how much could I buy of the one that I want? X stands for apples, okay? How many pounds of apples? So how could I solve for X here? How could I solve for X, Caleb? How could I solve for X? Chloe? Chloe? Divide both sides by one and a half. If they're a dollar fifty a pound, I can buy four pounds of apples. If I buy no bananas at all, now if I buy a pound of bananas, am I still going to be able to buy four pounds of apples? If I buy a pound of bananas? No. no. How much money would I be short if I tried to do that? Sixty cents, right? Because it's sixty cents a pound. You see what I'm doing here? I'm reasoning through this, guys. All right. So again, if you buy nothing of one category, how much could you buy of the other? That's what we're looking at here. This is a really nice application um, kind of into like daily life. Like how would we ever use intercepts? Okay. All right. So what do you think you're going to do if now next Saturday comes around and you're like, I ate apples all stinking week. I don't even want to look at an apple. I'm only going to buy bananas. So now what are you going to plug in for X? You're not going to buy any apples. So that's zero. So now the next week you're like, man, I want to make like a big pan of banana pudding. So I want to see how many bananas I can buy with my money. So now no apples. I'm only buying bananas. Let me ask you this before you solve it. Do you think you can buy more pounds of bananas or less than the apples? Why would you say more? Because they're less, right? So if you're trying to, let's say, get the most for your money or the largest quantity for your money, which one are you going to buy, apples or bananas? You're going to buy bananas because they're like less than half, right? So sometimes, you know, people who are really on a budget, that's what they do. They look at, okay, what food can I actually get the most of for this amount of money? And that's, you know, kind of the dilemma of eating healthy. Have you guys ever heard that, like, eating healthy is, like, a lot more expensive than, like, the dollar cheeseburgers at McDonald's? Yes. Okay, so that's kind of where some of that comes from. All right, what do I, uh, when I divide both sides by 0.6, what do I get? <clears throat> what do I get, guys? Ten pounds. Ten pounds of bananas. That's a lot more food, right? Bananas are just a little cheaper. <clears throat> All right, guys, if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for section 4.5.